Good morning, welcome to Worship at Peace Lutheran Fellowship, Port Lolo, on this fourth Sunday of Advent. We are um, glad that you have joined us, and uh, today we'll be talking about, right in the midst, we'll be picking up in the midst of the Christmas story where the angel Gabriel appears to Mary and tells her that she is going to bear this child of promise in Jesus. And uh, so we see uh, that scene take place, and I'll use a little Dietrich Bonhoeffer quote that um, I think speaks pretty well to today, at least for some of us anyway. And uh, um, so again, thank you for joining us. We are glad you are here and let us begin our worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free, free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love comforted by Christ's peace and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Blessed are you, God of hosts, for you promised to send a son, Emmanuel, who brought your presence among us, and you promise through your son, Jesus, to save us from our sin. As we light these candles, turn again to us in mercy, strengthen our faith in the word spoken by your prophets, restore us and give us life that we may be saved. O house of David, come. Let us rejoice for the Son of God, Emmanuel, comes to be with us. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy, that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's first reading is 2 Samuel 7, 1 through 11, and verse 16. Instead of David building a house or temple for God, God promises to establish David's house or dynasty forever. Centuries later, after the Babylonian exile, no king sat on the throne. Even then, however, the people of Israel remembered this promise and continued to hope for a king, the Messiah, God's anointed. A reading from 2 Samuel. 
Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Then Nathan said to the king, Go, do with it all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be the prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth, and I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more, and evil doers shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all of your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me, and your throne shall be established forever. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For you, Lord, have looked with favor on your holy servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you, from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm, and scattered the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their throne, and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel, to remember the promise of mercy. The promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Today's second reading is Romans sixteen twenty five through 27 Paul closes his letter to the Romans by praising God because in the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, God has revealed the promised divine plan of salvation for all humanity. Paul proclaims this gospel of Christ in order to bring about the obedience of faith among all nations. A reading from Romans. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel in the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The 
Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I used this quote last year during Advent, but I uh, wanted to use it again because I think it's so applicable to our times today. And um, in Dietrich Bonhoeffer's Letters and Papers from Prison, writing to a friend, he describes at the Advent prison as bombs fall and window planes are shattered and fellow prisoners are crying out in fear. He says, life in a prison cell may well be compared to Advent one waits hopes and does this or that or the other things that are really of no consequence the door is shut and can be opened only from the outside even so he adds faith can provide comfort in such times the calmness and joy with which we meet what is laid on us are as infectious as the terror that i see among the people here at each new attack and perhaps our times are very similar to this. Perhaps our uh, time, I know my time in the house feels a lot like um, what somebody would feel in house arrest, I think. I do this or that. I try to do my work and do my things, but uh, really it feels like everything's of no consequence. And so we pick up this in the Christmas story where we're in the Gospel of Luke, and the angel Gabriel appears to Mary, the mother of Jesus, and he tells her that she will bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus. What Gabriel told her was quite scandalous. He, what he was telling her was that though she was a virgin, she was going to have a baby but not just any baby, a baby who will be great, a baby who will reign over the house of Jacob and be called the son of God. Now that would be a huge task. And what the angel was telling her was essentially everything about this baby who will be great and do great things is going to make your life difficult. But don't be afraid, Mary. And what she didn't know is what the angel didn't tell her. What he didn't tell her is that you are going to have to explain this to your family. You're going to have to explain this to your community. You're going to have to flee Egypt as Herod's men seek to kill your child. You will nurture him and watch him grow, but you will also watch him be innocently convicted, beaten, humiliated, crucified before your very eyes and rejected by those closest to him. Blessed are you, O Mary, O highly favored one. But what was Mary's response to this angel's 
coming to her. Her response was, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Mary did not know, yet she had great faith and responded in great faith. She did not know the troubles that she would go through, but she knew that she would go through some. And Mary quickly, if we were to continue, travels off to her aunt's house, perhaps to avoid some scorn from her community. And her aunt Elizabeth confirms Mary's unique calling. And John the Baptist leaps for joy in his mother's womb. And this unique calling of Mary, you see, was gonna be difficult. It was gonna be hard. But yet Mary would be blessed through it. You see, there is something about waiting, something about longing, something about hardship and struggle that happens through the waiting until God fulfills it. There is something about that that God uses to mold us into the people God desires us to be, to prepare us for great things, to prepare us for beautiful things, to prepare us for healing and restoration. You see, life and really most of world history is more turbulent than we tend to think. Right now, we have been going through probably what I would consider the most turbulent times that I have ever experienced. Yet for many, the turbulent times that I am experiencing right now would be a walk in the park. It would be a easy day for them. Though I think we could all say these times are difficult or we'd all agree that these are particularly difficult times that we are facing. Perhaps we all have our different reasons for thinking that. You see, we all have our different ways of receiving and interpreting the information we are given. We all have different lenses in which we look at the world through. Though we may have many differences, at the same time, we share many commonalities with all people in our community. We all have our areas where we lack understanding or knowledge or perspective. We all have our areas where we lack strength. We all have our areas where perhaps maybe we feel we are lowly and maybe some of us are waiting for some sort of favor like Mary was, waiting for God to throw us a line as we thrash in the water. Some of us are waiting for God to do great things or maybe even just good things in our lives or at least open our eyes so that we can see all the many blessed and great things that God has already done. You see, Mary though was able to look past all the difficulties and all the motivations and she's able to look past that and in proclaiming her Magnificat song her first response is simply, finally, God, finally, you have acted. Finally, you have done something about our plight. Finally, you have come and it is through me, she says, of all people, a lowly young woman who walks in faith, despite the ramifications of conceiving out of wedlock. Mary is not only the mother of God, she is entrusted with the stewardship of God's promise to the world. This promise that God will do great things, that God will deliver on his promises and protect and restore his people. That God will topple the mighty down from their thrones, that the lowly will be lifted up and the hungry filled. And she hopes this. And she responds this way because Mary bore a child and his name is Jesus. Amen. Amen. The lovely melody of this hymn is probably unfamiliar to you, so I will play it through once 
and then we will sing together three verses. There is also an introduction of four measures, and every verse has this interlude. Join me today as we recite the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, 
For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who, with the Father and the Son, is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Gracious God, all generations call you blessed. In this holy season, we pray for our neighbors of other denominations and faiths. Inspire the faith of their people. Cultivate understanding among us and strengthen us in love and service to our community. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creator God, you scatter the proud. Everything we have belongs to you first. Bless and protect the seas, the mountains, plains, forests, skies, and soils that surround us. Give us humility as we tend them. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Righteous God, you humble the powerful and lift up the lowly. We pray for the leaders of all nations that they amplify the voices of the people in need. Guide all people entrusted with leadership to create societies in which everyone can flourish. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you fill the hungry with good things and send the rich away empty. Nourish those who lack access to adequate food and nutrition. Bless the work of advocates, community organizers, and food pantries. Encourage others to provide for their neighbors in need. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, you pour out mercy to all who cry out to you. Surround everyone in need of healing in body, mind, or spirit with your tender presence. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, you are faithful to the promises you made to our forebears. We give thanks for the ministry of Katharina von Bora Luther and other ancestors who organized, planned, dreamed, encouraged, and reached out as they served you. We give thanks for the bold leadership of female leaders in our own time. You inspire others with their steadfast witness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Praise Mary Joseph, lend your aid. 
Lord, well our hearts in love we raise the Gloria in excelsis Deo Gloria in excelsis Deo Generous God, you have created all that is and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts, the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new, in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so, with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this. For the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and this cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours. Holy One of Israel, word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, 
now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Even as we watch and wait, Christ is here. Christ invites all to this table, all who would come and receive his body and blood, the bread and wine, are welcome to come and receive. Christ is here. Come, eat, and drink. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist those who set forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are sick, homebound and imprisoned. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who will receive this sacrament, and give us all the comfort of your abiding presence, through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior, fill you with love. The unexpected spirit, guide your journey now and forever. Amen. This coming Thursday is Christmas Eve and we'll be having our worship service at its customary time for Christmas Eve on Thursday at 11 o'clock so please uh, join in us we'll be having our regular service and uh, it'll be a good time we'll do some maybe get some candles out or something and uh, be, be ready and prepared for that um, so uh, and the offering for that where the Christmas service will be going to our local food banks and because of the nature of you know of separation and not having a place and everything is our uh, impact in the community has been greatly reduced this year so if you would use us as an opportunity to really show that we're still around and we still exist and we're still as committed to our community as ever to give to them in a very good and strong way i think that'd be 
a, a right thing to do. So I encourage that as much as you are uh, willing and able. And so again, our worship service will be on Thursday at 11 o'clock and we hope you are able to join us. Go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.